So today I'm going to show you how to make a marbled effect in Affinity Photo 2. So bear in mind this is a marble effect, uh, an artistic effect, not how to draw marble as in the material, the, the stone. Okay, so first of all, let's open up a new document. I'm going to make mine A4. I guess it's going to just be like a, a digital paper. Um, okay, so there's lots of ways that you can go about this, but the way that I'm going to do it is by creating a series of rectangles. I'm going to do it, do them horizontally. So over on Spoonflower, there's a um, design challenge. It's called Wonderful World. And I thought that for my um, take on it, I would do like a blue planet type thing, but make it, so use the colors, blues and greens, maybe a little bit of white for the clouds um, to simulate the planet and then make a marbled effect so like an abstract take on it so that's what I'm going to try and do here um, I'm going to make sure that my stroke is off for now and then I'm yeah just going to work on different tones of blue and green so I'm going to control click to replicate the layer, just reproduce these layers, and I'm going to adjust the colors a little bit so we get different shades of blue, and uh, also play around with the size of the bars, but they're not all constant. Maybe a slightly different shade of green. I'll make some narrower, make some bigger. So now that we've got all this, what you can do is I'm going to group. This one, I'm just going to make sure that they're aligned so that everything is on the canvas. Okay, then I'm going to group that. I'm going to duplicate it so that we have this here and hide it. But then this one, I'm going to rasterize and trim. So I'm going to right click on it and click rasterize. And so now it's a pixel layer. Okay, so in order to get the marble effect, we're going to go to layer, oh, sorry, filters, distort, twirl. And this little window will pop up. There's two control bars. One controls the angle, so that's how much twist you get. And it goes sort of either clockwise or anti-clockwise. And then one will control the magnitude of the effect, so how strong the effect is going up to 1024. So you can see there, it um, it varies a lot. So to start off with, I, all, I set the magnitude, the radius here to uh, 1024. And then I would set this around 200. I don't want anything too big. And if you click on here, you can see that the effect moves around wherever your mouse is hovering. So I'm just going to start off over here and then click apply. Now, if you go to filters, if you click repeat twirl, it will repeat the twirl, the same values, but in exactly the same spot. Um, I don't want to do that. So I'm, but so what I keep doing is go to distort and twirl, and then move this around the page and adjust the angle, and adjust the position, adjust the direction, and hit apply. And you basically do this over and over and over again until you get something that you like the look of. So, and you can see that once you um, apply the distortion like over an existing one, you sort of get an interference kind of effect. And so that's quite interesting. So I would just initially kind of have a play. And at first it might seem like it's all just not working, but keep going. And eventually it will all come together.
try to avoid having all the t twists and twirls going in the same direction. Um, it's a more kind of interesting look if you've got uh, lots of different directions happening. And so you keep doing that until you're satisfied. I guess it's up to you to decide just how much of an effect you want. And so then when you're done, then you'll have your marble effect. Now note here that there's no, there's no layers. Uh, once it's done, it's done. So that's why I suggested keeping the original, because if for some reason you didn't like that and you wanted to start again, or, you know, you wanted to change something, if you didn't have this pattern that you started off with, you'd have, you'd have to basically do that all again. Okay, so there you've got your pattern. And then if you want to sort of take this further, you can add, so I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then not necessarily lock it, but I'm going to hide it. You could lock it. Um, add a, an HSL hue saturation lightness filter. And then what you can do is either change the global color. So if you stay on the master um, setting and change the hue, it will change the hue of the whole thing. So all the, all the colors will be shifted at the same time. So then you can go there and see if there's anything that you like. That's quite a sort of nice vintagey type of blue. You can adjust the saturation if you want it to be a bit less colorful or make it more colorful. Um, you can change the lightness. So if you wanted a sort of more pastel effect, or you wanted a more moody effect. And then if you do something you don't like it, just click reset and it will go back to your original. So what I would tend to do is, oh, and then you can also adjust the individual um, channels. So if, for example, you like the blue, but you're not so keen on the green, if you click on the green channel, you can adjust the hue of just the green. I quite like that. That's kind of like a nice ocean type color scheme. And the same thing as well, you can then uh, adjust the saturation. You can adjust the lightness. So I quite like this kind of sea foam blue type of effect here. So I'm going to keep that. And then what you can do then, once you've, is um, duplicate your original again. We'll hide that and reveal that and then add another HSL filter. Now this time you can say adjust the blues. So you've got blue. Let's do something okay, completely different. You can make it highly saturated. You can make it more washed out. Increase the lightness a little bit. And then if you adjust the cyan as well, you might find that there is an effect or not an effect. It depends on what sort of shades of blue that you used in your design. So it's not having an effect for me. Um, you can adjust the magenta. We didn't have any magenta in our original. It was all blues and greens, wasn't it? So we'll put that back to zero. I'm going to adjust the green as well because this green's kind of can you tell that i love turquoise everything else seems to end up being some shade of teal or turquoise <laughs> okay that's quite nice i like that so i'm going to put that there and then you can keep doing that to duplicate your layer hide this one Adjust these settings. If you reset it, then you can start from scratch. 
We can maybe do a universal thing that's sort of red, white, and blue, very patriotic. That's um You can also play with blend modes within this. So once you've seen something that you like, you can play with the blend mode of the filter and get even more effects. That's quite nice. So you from one from one pattern, you get lots of different effects. And you don't have to start off with uh, You don't have to start off with lines. You can do um, lots of different shapes. So let's try that. Let's open up a new document. Um, I want to keep all these documents. Okay, so last time we used um, stripes. Let's try, let's have a look. Let's try ellipses this time. So there you go, we've got all that. Let's group that, everything together. To duplicate that, lock that and hide it. Gonna rasterize and trim, and then apply the distortion filter, twirl. And let's see how this turns out, how different this looks. Here I wanted to see how it would turn out if I started off with a kind of a watercolour doodle. And here I just used a pattern that I'd already made to see how that would turn out. So do have a play and see for yourselves how the starting point does affect the end result. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please do leave a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more design tutorials and I'll see you next time. Bye!